Hawaii, long promoted as a paradise of unimaginable beauty and a safe haven for relaxation, is now like the world facing an uncertain future. There are so many farmers at risk right now, and if you don't save them right now, they're not gonna be here a year from now. The part that's critical that often gets left out is a culture in agriculture. And with only 15 to 17 percent of our food being grown locally, if we saw a major disruption in our supply chain, um, the entire population of our islands could have problems with um, food supply. If something happens like that, no planes, no ships, I don't think we survive. We need more farmers, we need more people growing tower, we need more land. We have a very finite resources living on an island. I don't want our island to be like Koho'olawe. I want our soils to remain on our farms. Through the personal stories of those on the front line comes a new film that explores the most critical issues facing Hawaii and the world. Save the ag lands. The governor says it. Every year in the state of the state, we're going to protect ag lands. Where? When? They subdivided this beautiful ranch land, you know, kicked all the old time families off. That was a real trauma on the people because they just kicked them off the ranch. No, we don't need you anymore. Just kick them off. I'm a farmer and they take pride in that. When they lose that, it's devastating. I've seen people suffer. You know, alcoholism, drug abuse, families disintegrate. Over 40 years of my farming career, I've seen these things happen. I have a real place in my heart for farmers because it really hurts to see this happening, and it's still happening. We malam over here, we the whole kuleana, this whole valley. So any houses they're building, you know, it hurts us, you know. It's heavy, you know. There's definitely a block of people that are hungry and that are suffering from food security issues. We have about what anybody's guessed from five days to two weeks worth of food if we have a problem, an issue with shipping here and then everybody starves after that. We live in one of the richest states of the world. We live in the richest country in the world. And it's almost embarrassing to, find, to realize uh, that almost one in three families in the state are food insecure. One in three families actually don't have enough food. And if we're cut off from the mainland, our food supply, we're in big trouble. We're in big, big trouble. If we're in, in, for an extended period of time, we will not be able to feed our people. And that's scary. So. At what point is it not part of homeland security to be able to, to sustain more of our population? We import something like a million pounds of taro a year, and that's compared to approximately six million pounds grown here in the islands. So it's a significant portion that's brought in. I think if everybody grows a little bit of their own food, they have the tools to be able to grow more of their own food. Having those tools is the critical element. This is not touchy-feely stuff. This is life and death. This is the future of our people. Both sides need each other. It's no, for me, it's no, nobody lose. It's a win-win both sides. We just got to learn how to work together. Yeah. Journey with the heroes who are finding solutions. Yeah, these guys are fertilizer factories. This is what we're getting these fish for, so that they can convert some of the waste products that we have into fertilizer from innovative farmers, both large and small, to food distributors, ranchers, and educators who are growing new ideas that can help restore Hawaii's long tradition of self-sufficiency. The tower just comes down a valley right here, and a lot of it gets sold right out of this building to people in our community. That's, that's our priority, is feed our own community. Every Bradford in here is a story from where it came from, the people I work with to collect them. But you know, that just this dream I had to go to the Pacific and collect varieties is now manifest into this beautiful collection of trees. Why am I so passionate about breadfruit? Why am I convinced that breadfruit can really make play an important role for food security in Hawaii and elsewhere? From this one tree, you have a full meal. Dad was wasn't very well, you know, in his last years. He said that um, looking out the window, looking at the taro, he said, I don't know what's gonna happen to this place. I don't know what's gonna happen to the taro. But he wasn't asking me or telling me anything 
or giving me responsibility. Um, but I, that's the moment I knew that I would do it. Each school garden is a seed of hope. Some of the students at the Waimea Middle School program, they're saying that they want to become farmers. Through doing the gardening and farming and stuff like that, it's been it's like really helping me to figure out what I want to do in the future. You gotta make it fun. If it ain't fun, you know, the chances of you getting the kids involved is almost zero. We've carried that with us and, and I hope that these guys would do the same, you know, from what we've taught them. We started working with high school kids and we realized that it's really hard to change their minds once they've gotten to a certain point. So now we take um, elementary school, kindergartners and preschoolers because I think kids also naturally want to be outside. If you marry being outside and having fun and making it fun and eating healthy food, if you incorporate all of those things together and you keep working with them, then they grow up with that. From the kupuna to the keiki, we all came together for one purpose, and that is to once again hold ulu and, and grow paloa once more. It kind of like dug like deep into our hearts, I think. What is the most important thing on the planet? It is people, it is people, it is people. I'm on a wheelchair. I can't do it that fast, but the job will be done in a quality way, yeah. Pull the gate, drop them back in, clearance good, pull them back up, we take them and lash it up. I feel like it's just such a small effort, but it's, you know, everything will make a difference. Pull them all the way through, double back, lock. The Hawaiians built a system of aquaculture that was light years ahead of their time. It's ingenious. These fish ponds are like ingenious. We could produce tons of fish beyond what the reef gave us. Because of making business decisions, we're actually cash positive, I think, for one of the first times. So we're supplying meat to the local economy. We're being able to pay ranchers for their product. Come, 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 come. Come on. That's a big thing for me, because then the system grows from that point. And, and you're beginning to, to work out a picture of sustainability where your food comes from the place that you're at, as it used to be 100 years ago. That's why I think agriculture is so important, because we are a basic foundation. I don't care what happens to this world. Without an agricultural foundation, there's no hope. I will not lay down. I, my last breath will be fighting that kind of mentality, you know, where they want to destroy the um, egg lands. These are the true stories that will inspire the world to nurture the land that feeds us. You, you plant a seed, you nurture that seed, you watch it grow, you care for it, and then it feeds you. Some of the youth that come through our program may never ever be farmers, but they learn certain skills that they're going to take into the rest of their lives. And here I am, knowledgeable about farming, ocean, maybe I'll go into nutrition, and hopefully my kids, you know, they'll be in this community. Then they'll be farmer, nutrition, uh, you know, ocean, whatever, astronaut, I don't know, whatever. If I can do this, I'm sure I could do a lot of things. <laughs> Nakupu Manaolana, Seeds of Hope. Creating a model for a sustainable future the entire planet so desperately needs.